Donald Trump has just entered into another legal battle out there, this one of his own accord. He is suing the Department of Justice over the Mar-a-Lago raid by the FBI for not following precedent and for political persecution. Uh, he is asking for $100 million in damages. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, some of the other cases that Donald Trump has arraigned against him, including a sentencing that's coming up in September, what that could mean, what's going on with that. And, of course, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff we're going to be tossing in here along the way. Like, did you know that the British need a license to watch TV? The things that you find on the Internet. Absolutely crazy. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar. I'm an accountant by trade. And uh, these are your updates, things that the mainstream media either just doesn't want to cover or they put so much spin on it, you can't even, uh, <clears throat> you have a hard time not gagging watching whatever they're doing, right? So uh, if you appreciate that, please do hit the thumbs up button. Let's get into it. All right, so uh, Donald Trump has just notified the uh, U.S. Department of Justice that he is suing for $100 million. I know it sounds sort of like a, like a, some kind of evil scheme or something like that. $100 million. <laughs> but here's a simple fact is that the FBI throughout all precedent. Did they raid uh, Joe Biden's garage when, when they found out that he had, you know, classified security documents there in his garage next to his car in cardboard boxes? Unsecured? Nope, they didn't raid it. What did they do? They talked to his lawyers and asked his lawyers to negotiate the return of some of that material. And those materials from Joe Biden's house were clearly um, related to Ukraine. Kind of important stuff, right? Why was he carrying cases and cases of, uh, of documents and security, uh, top, secur top secret stuff from Ukraine? Well, it might have something to do with his, his son being... Uh, a, a big wig on an energy firm that he had no business being on the board of because payments were happening and uh, that was a way to facilitate the payments in order to get uh, proper treatment from the U.S. government. Favorable treatment. Uh, we have had numerous prosecutors and legal analysts say that, that, that there is more than enough evidence to bring charges against uh, him proper, not just his son, but proper. So in that case, what did the FBI do? Did the FBI do a raid? Did the FBI go in with guns ready to start shooting Secret Service agents like they did in Mar-a-Lago? There was use of force authorization in case social uh, Secret Service did not, <laughs> social services, right? uh, in case C Secret Service did not stand down or if any of the security guards at Mar-a-Lago did not stand down, the FBI was prepared to shoot them. That's what the documents say. And they went in and secured, now you've probably seen the pictures with the, the top secret uh, cover pages and stuff like that on some of the documents. What they did was they went into the boxes, they pulled out his notes, his handwritten notes. Trump made notes while he was president, at, when he was at meetings and stuff like that, he made notes. Those notes, they put on the floor, and then the FBI put their cover sheets on them. So that's where the top secret cover sheets came from. They weren't attached to the documents or anything like that. They were just his handwritten notes that they put the top secret document uh, cover pages on. Then they and laid them out on the floor and took pictures of them. They unpacked them from a locked wing of Mar-a-Lago, put them out, took pictures of them, and then released those to the media, leaked them out to the media. Clearly designed to embarrass and to, and to damage the reputation of Donald Trump. And let's just admit it, the reputation of Donald Trump is kind of valuable. Like, how many tens of millions of dollars worth of advertising are going in right now 
uh, on his campaign to increase his reputation, right? To defend his reputation. We're talking about tens of millions of dollars. If anyone in the United States, if you're defending your brand's reputation, that's, that's a really serious business. But when you are the brand, like a political figure, public speakers, or, or a leader of some sort, the, the leader's reputation is very valuable. And $100 million is not, not off base, not off base at all. But as Donald Trump has come out and said, he says, it's not about the money. It's not about me defending myself. It's about making sure that this never happens again to anyone else. That this needs to be made clear that this cannot and ought not to ever happen again. This was done under the orders of special counsel Jack Smith. Of course, a federal judge has just recently ruled that special counsel Jack Smith was unconstitutionally appointed that they weaseled their way through the legal system and, and, and used authorizations to, to appoint Jack Smith to special counsel that were unconstitutional, illegal. The Biden administration literally conjured up a special counsel without the approval of Congress, which is kind of a necessary step in order to use this political um, assassination attempt on Donald Trump's person and his reputation. When that didn't work out, it's amazing how somebody else took a shot. We're seeing that this was intended to end his political career. And it was done illegally. Federal judges have agreed that this was done illegally. So if it's done illegally, it's done maliciously, is that grounds for a lawsuit? It absolutely is. And friends, uh, this is probably going to be discussed a little bit tonight. Donald Trump has reappeared on Twitter um, as of the shooting of this video um, uh, about an hour ago, uh, for you guys, uh, maybe two hours by the time we get this posted, right? Donald Trump has reappeared on Twitter and has gone in with guns ablazing. This evening at 8 p.m. Eastern St uh, Standard, uh, he is going to sit down and Elon Musk is going to interview him on Twitter. That should be an interesting interview. That should be an interesting conversation. Uh, Elon Musk is an interesting character as it is. He's always the one getting interviewed, but he's going to interview Elon Musk, uh, uh, Donald Trump. So uh, now Elon Musk has just recently moved SpaceX uh, and now Twitter as well as uh, Tesla from California to Texas. Elon Musk has come out uh, in support of Donald Trump's uh, campaign for, uh, for president. Uh, so this is a, this should be an interesting, interesting conversation, right? Now let's talk about the other case that is uh, uh, against Donald Trump right now, because this is a big deal. Uh, well, let's finish up with uh, the, the Smith um, uh, case. So um, that case was dismissed and uh, we still see... Um, Jack Smith kind of trying to continue his attack and delaying uh, options there. And uh, uh, he was just gunning for a prosecution as fast as possible, trying to get indictments. Um, but that didn't really work out. And now he's trying to slow pedal the uh, dismissal of those cases. Um, now, the, uh, the case where Donald Trump has been found guilty uh, this is under Judge Merchant, uh, the uh, political hack whose daughter is an actual uh, fundraiser for the Democratic National uh, uh, Committee or Convention or whatever. His daughter is actually fundraising off of his court case. And if you're like, that sounds dirty and sleazy and I don't know if it's illegal, but it certainly is on the border of that. The fact that the antics happening in his courtroom are being used by his daughter to fundraise for a political party 
should just kind of tell you about where this is at. So anyway, uh, Judge Merton, Merchin is now under pressure by the prosecution to slow walk this as well. They were pedal to the metal, move everything ahead. Every uh, attempt by the Trump um, team to, to slow things down, give them more time to prepare defenses and such like that, they, they just steamrolled over all that because this, there's so much urgency that this needs to be addressed. Well, suddenly the prosecution is, just like Jack Smith, uh, just slow walking this now. It's like, actually, let's delay the sentencing. Let's delay things. They got their conviction. They don't want to get to the sentencing. And why don't they want to get to the sentencing? One, because they realize that's going to um, tick people off like nobody's business. But even more importantly, Donald Trump can't appeal this until the sentencing happens. I mean, he kind of can, but, but generally speaking, um, he has to wait for the sentencing before he can appeal uh, the the thing. So they can file paperwork, but it's like the process doesn't start until the sentencing happens. And then it's like, okay, yeah, you were damaged by this, so therefore, okay, you, we, can, we can process your appeal. So the prosecution is intentionally trying to make it so that his appeal definitely can't start processing because there's always the danger that his appeal will get before a judge and a judge says, yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. Let's have a hearing. And if he calls a hearing, an informal hearing between the two parties, um, the federal prosecutor and, 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 and uh, the Trump uh, team listens to the argument, he can just take it and just throw it out and just be like, this is, ap I mean, this doesn't need to be discussed. This can just be thrown out. So, I mean, that could happen very quickly. I mean, it doesn't usually happen that quickly, but I mean, given the political prosecution of this and given the, uh, the conflicts of interest of Judge Merchant, given the fact that the, the sentencing and the, uh, the instructions given to the jury before they went back were completely unconstitutional. Like, nobody argues that the, the orders that uh, Merchant gave to the uh, uh, jury before they went back behind closed doors, like, that is unprecedented and unconstitutional. It goes against what every single judge says to the jury before they go. You need to agree on the charges. You can't have juror ones like, I think he's, a, he's guilty of uh, charge two, and, uh, but I think he's innocent of all the rest. And then, you know, every other juror picks out one of the charges and they're like, I think, that's, I think he is guilty of that. And then they go, okay, well, then he's guilty of everything. Like, that's not how the system works. And yet that was the, um, he said to the jury that they did not have to agree on which charges he was guilty of, just that every juror need to come to a conclusion that he was guilty of one of them. What? That's insane. That's like, you don't have to be a legal scholar. You don't have to be a lawyer to go, that doesn't sound right. Like, you could be convicted of a charge that 11 of the jurors think you're innocent of. They're convinced you're innocent of. How does that sit? <laughs> that doesn't sit well at all. So we have the, they're slow walking this case now because they don't want him to appeal because if it gets before a real judge, an uncompromised judge, the judge could just take it and throw it out. And he would be vindicated. Donald Trump would be vindicated. And that's probably what's gonna happen. The only question is, is, is it gonna happen before the election or after the election? And they're working their darndest to make sure it's after the election. This is the shadiness and the deep state hard at work with its, with its political attempts to end the campaign of Donald Trump. Meanwhile, we have Special K and, and you know, Walls out there hiding. Neither one of them have answered, uh, have, have had a press conference. I mean, they're only the... They're only the nominees for the second largest party in the United States. And neither one of them has had press conference about this. Like, no, 
they've, they've not answered any questions. Uh, Harris answered just like a couple quick questions from a, a sympathetic journalist. Um, she sat down to a glowing, you know, massage uh, interview. But, but other than that, she hasn't sat, sat down with any hostile interviews. She hasn't sat down with any unbiased interviews. So you could say basically she hasn't really done any interviews. She hasn't done any press conferences. Neither has Walls. Doesn't that seem a little odd to you? Just the fact that, that, that all of the rallies that she's been to, most of them have been where she wasn't the headline. She was going to concerts that people were going to anyway that people had already paid tickets for. And they let her up on the stage. They passed out signs so that people would hold them up. Most of the people didn't hold them up. And when she started speaking, people started leaving. I'm sorry, but that's not a political rally when you didn't organize it and you're not the headline, but you have a big wig uh, musician group or it's a, um, what's it called? Uh, when you have a whole bunch of bands together, right? I mean, it was a, it was a concert, uh, but, uh, but more than that, right? And some of these things where, where they, people are there for the weekend or whatever, and uh, they pay a lot of money to be there. And she gets up on stage and then they take pictures of it and they're like, oh, look at her crowd. I'm sorry, but if they bring Donald Trump down on the field, a football game, that crowd's not there for Donald Trump, okay? Even if they bring him down. They're there for the football game. And then it'd be stupid to say that that crowd was there for Donald Trump. Now, they may be very excited to see him. Uh, Donald Trump uh, showed up at a uh, NASCAR rally a while back, right? But, I mean, no one here is saying they showed up to see Donald Trump. No, they, they showed up for the NASCAR, right? But they did start cheering. <laughs> anyway... But that's what's going on out there. And then you have other things that are very clearly um, doctored AI photos that's been widely uh, debunked. It's, it's absolutely insane. And I promise you I talk about how the British need a license to watch TV. <laughs> Yikes. Now, apparently it's, it's kind of like you, you pay for the license or whatever so that you can um, and, and then the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, they get some of the fees or all the fees from that so they can then produce like Doctor Who, Who and stuff, right? And so that they can then push propaganda through their BBC news. Anyway, um, but once again, if the government gives you a license to do something, the government has the right to take it away from you. It's not a right if you need a license for it. And uh, we, we've been saying that about boomsticks, but uh, imagine if you're, you can't even watch a TV if the government revokes your license. Absolutely insane, friends. Um, we don't want to turn into the UK. We don't want the US to turn into the UK. We just don't. We don't want to go there. And in fact, friends, it's going to require us to say no strongly, loudly, and if necessary, forcefully. All right, friends. Um, Let's, uh, let's do what we can politically. Let's do what we can uh, ginning up uh, support amongst others. Uh, keep, sharing, keep sharing stuff with other people. I know memes are, aren't very effective and stuff like that, but funny ones kind of are, right? Uh, and uh, humor is a great way of breaking down people's defenses. Um, and uh, satire, right? Keep sharing those with, with people that, uh, that haven't gotten it yet, right? Maybe they will get it. All right, friends. Thanks so much for joining with us. If you want to check out another video from this channel, there's one right up here. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you guys later. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report.